This evening, GTU strikes end. Over a month of nationwide protests, the Ghana Teachers Union has ceased a strike following a successful mediation order by High Court Justice. Teachers are to resume work on Wednesday, March 6, 2024. Suspected murder investigation. The Ghana Police Force is investigating the suspected murder of a laborer from West Coast Burbies whose body was discovered in the back dam. Canoes drug bust. The Customs Anti-Narcotics Unit conducted a successful operation intercepting a speedboat with over 600 brick-like parcels of suspected cannabis. Canu noted that the narcotics were destined for transshipment to other territories. GPS enhances security measures. The Ghana Prison Service is set to enhance security measures across its facilities to curb the entry of contraband items. Efforts to improve conditions, recruit qualified personnel, and address policy challenges are also on the way. Haiti Airport Attack Heavy armed guns attempt to seize control of Haiti's main international airport, exchanging gunfires with police and soldiers. Welcome to this broadcast of Channel 2's Headline News Update for March 5, 2024. I am Baby Bacchus. Thank you for joining us. After a month of striking, the Ghana Teachers Union ceased their nationwide protests on Monday following a successful mediation order by the High Court Justice Sandal Kasun. The mediation, conducted by senior counsels Robin Stobie and Edward Loku, resulted in an agreement for salary discussions between the GTU and the government. GTU President Mark Light expressed satisfaction with the agreement emphasizing the importance of addressing financial matters in the upcoming talks scheduled to commence on Thursday, March 7, 2024. The agreement, now a court order, stipulates the resumption of work by teachers by Wednesday, March 6, and mandates discussions on relevant issues at the Ministry of Education boardroom in Georgetown. While certain financial matters were not included in the agreement due to ongoing court proceedings, both parties committed to engaging in good faith discussions to address teachers' concerns. Turning now to the Ghana Police Force and its investigation of the suspected murder of Odit Prasad Thom, a 45-year-old laborer from No. 5 Village, West Coast, Barbies. The incident is believed to have occurred between March 2nd and 4th, 2024, at No. 41 Bagdam, West Coast, Barbies. Thom, who tended to cattle in the Bagdam for various individuals, including Renison Mitchell, a 28-year-old from Seafield Village, West Coast Barbies, was staying at the camp in Seafield Back Dam, West Coast Barbies, where the animals were kept. Mitchell reported that on March 3rd, Rameshwar Mohan, also known as Old Bull, a rice farmer from Fowlis, West Coast Barbies, impounded his cattle and others under Tom's care at the Wildad Police Station. This prompted Mitchell to head to the back dam to locate Thom. However, he could not be found at the camp. On March 4th, Mitchell and fellow cattle farmers discovered Thom's body floating in a trench at number 41 back dam, separated from the rice field by the savannah. Police retrieved the body, which showed signs of decomposition and chopped wounds to the arms and head. Thom's backpack containing toiletries and his identification card was discovered on his person. Meanwhile, investigations into the incident are on the way. Staying with current events, Canu makes a significant drug bust off the coast of Essequibo. Our reporter, Dale Jarvis, provides us with details of this daring operation and the latest on the ongoing investigation. Officers of the Customs anti narcotic Unit conducted an operation on Sunday, March 3, 2024, when they observed a multicolored speedboat operated by two individuals in the vicinity of Fisher Village, Essequibo Coast. The ranks then pursued the boat, which caused the individuals to run aground and subsequently made good their escape on foot. A subsequent search of the boat revealed several bulky whitish colored sod bags containing over 600 brick like parcels suspected to be cannabis. The narcotic was transported to Kanu's headquarters where it was tested and determined to be a foreign marijuana commonly known as Creepy and weighed 300 kg with a street value of approximately 44 million Guyana dollars. According to Kanu, the narcotic was destined for transship to other territories where the street value would have been much higher. Thus far, for the year 2024, Kanu has intercepted 859 kgs of foreign marijuana entering Guyana for the purpose of transshipment. Reporting for Headline News Update, Dale Jarvis. Thanks, Dale. 
Stick around when we return. Ghana Prison Service boosts security measures to combat contraband entry. And police hunt for a husband in fatal stabbing of Parika Batnam housewife. Experience more than award-winning speed. Way more. Get the best that LTE has to offer on Digicel, officially the fastest mobile network in Guyana. Ukla, the company behind Speedtest, recognizes Digicel as the best mobile network in Guyana. With the best LTE experience and the fastest data speeds, experience it all with Digicel, the award-winning network for everyone, everywhere. Good, good girl, forget things. Oh, Who's the problem, Granny? I want money for borrow for those surgery. I was dancing and I fall and fracture my hip. If you need some quick money, you should check Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop, Lot 238 South Road, Border, Georgetown. Get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours. We also accept vehicles. Lenders, best rates, longest payback period. Boys, I get through. Plus, I could dance again. <laughs> Lenders Jewelry and Pawn Shop. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisum's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinfeld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Carriverton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Sneak away with the gift of sight from modern optical services. Let our professional team examine and prescribe what's best for your eyes. Curry smiles make fashionable faces. See us for a full line of optical services, including brand name and prescription eyewear. Modern Optical Services, 316 Middle Street, Georgetown, telephone 226 -1082. Welcome back. Ranks of the Ghana Police Force are in the hunt for a 24-year-old man from Parikabak Dam who allegedly fatally stabbed his wife at their home on Monday, March 4th, 2024. The dead woman has been identified as Nikisha Sutton, a 24-year-old housewife of Parikabak Dam. The suspect, who is yet to be apprehended, is Nikisha's 24-year-old husband. Investigations so far indicate that around 3 p.m., the suspect arrived home under the influence of alcohol when a heated argument ensued between him and Akisha, prompting him to leave the home. Around 5 p.m., the suspect returned home with two alcoholic beverages in his hand, at which point a heated argument ensued again between him and Akisha, which resulted in a scuffle. The sister of the deceased woman intervened and stopped the scuffle. The suspect told Akisha to pack her stuff and leave the home. According to reports, Nikisha placed some clothes in a bucket and was making her way through a track to her sister's house nearby when the suspect picked up one of the beer bottles, broke it and dealt one stab to her neck. He then fled the scene. The body was escorted to the Lenora Cottage Hospital where it was pronounced dead on arrival by a doctor on duty. The body is at the Ezekiel Funeral Home awaiting a postmortem examination. The police are looking for the suspect as investigations continue. In other news, the Ghana Prison Service is set to enhance security measures across its facilities to curb the entry of contraband items. Director of Prisons Nick Leon Elliott stated this during a recent interview with BPI. Measures include installing advanced scanning systems, considering canine and drone patrols, and reinforcing physical infrastructure. Elliott highlighted the importance of reducing contraband and improving security layers to maintain safety within the prisons. Additionally, 
The Ghana Prison Service has focused on prisoner training programs aimed at reducing violence and reoffending rates. Efforts to recruit qualified personnel and address policy challenges, include improving conditions of service and job satisfaction, are also on the way. The Ghana Prison Service recently held its annual officers conference to discuss challenges, best practices, and strategies for improvement. Moving on, six families in Seafield Sapphire received a boost to their livelihood with the distribution of 75 broiler chickens each aimed at supporting poultry rearing efforts. Minister of Tourism, Industry and Commerce, Wanage Waldron, facilitated the handing over ceremony at the Sapphire Community Center, expressing the government's commitment to responding to residents' needs. Recipients expressed gratitude for the support, emphasizing the opportunity for financial independence and business growth. Minister Waldron highlighted the importance of proper management and offered continued support through the Ghana Livestock Development Authority to ensure success in poultry rearing ventures. The minister also stressed that real empowerment comes from managing businesses and many persons have become successful from poultry rearing. Don't go away after the break. NATO troops are taking part in a huge military exercise in Poland and a hunger crisis in Chad. Aid agencies warn of worsening shortages. <sighs> Not a single bar of service. Not with us. Digicel officially has the best mobile coverage in Guyana. Ookla, the company behind Speed Test, recognizes Digicel as the network with the best mobile coverage in Guyana. Be it in Aishelton or in Etteringbang, we got you covered. Digicel, the award-winning network for everyone, everywhere. problem granny i want money for bar for those surgery i was dancing on a fall and fracture my hip if you need some quick money you should check lenders jewelry and pawn shop lenders jewelry and pawn shop lot 238 south road border georgetown get jewelry made to order in just 72 hours we also accept vehicles lenders best rates longest payback period boys i get you plus i could dance again oh. lenders jewelry and pawn shop Modern Optical Services. Three sixteen Mill Street, Georgetown. Telephone two two six one zero eight two. Furnishing your home or office has never been easier. Here at Kisoon's, our inventory of locally made and imported furniture, offered at amazing prices, will leave you wanting more. From vinyl, floor rugs, and carpets, bedroom, dining, and living room sets, mattresses, pillows, office desks, chairs, and filing cabinets, outdoor benches, and tables, we have a piece of furniture for every room imaginable in your home or office. Check out our flagship store at Industrial Site Rheinveld or one of our branches in New Amsterdam, Port Morant, Cariviton, and Camp Street. Kisoon's Furniture, furnishing homes for over 50 years. Welcome back. Now we take a look at what's happening in the region and around the world. Heavily armed gangs have tried to seize control of Haiti's main international airport, exchanging gunfires with police and soldiers. The Dussault Levature International Airport was closed at the time of the attack on Monday, with no planes operating and no passengers on site. It was the latest attack on key government sites in an explosion of violence that includes a mass escape from the country's two biggest prisons. The international airport has stopped operating. No flights in or out. Paralyzed by gang violence, like much of the country. A gang leader and former police officer Jimmy Cherize, nicknamed Barbecue, has claimed responsibility for the attacks, saying the aim is to force the Prime Minister, Ariel Henry, to stand down. In an unusual move, the gangs are uniting to bring down the government and analysts say this could be a turning point in Haiti's already tumultuous history. 
The government gave us the weapons to fight with our brothers and sisters. Now we turn the guns against them to fight them because they don't do anything for us. Gangs have overrun two of the main prisons in the capital, releasing several thousand prisoners, including gang leaders. Gun battles are taking place in the streets. Prisoners have escaped from several jails. It's miserable. The crisis is getting worse. Everywhere is unsafe. I can't find clients for my taxi to make money to feed my children. I'm an old man. Nothing seems to be functioning here anymore. Thousands of people are fleeing their homes. Many are having to queue up to get clean water. Some tell Al Jazeera they haven't been able to find drinking water since Sunday. We feel discouraged. We're fleeing. Our children can't go to school. We can't buy food. How can we live in such a situation? We're fighting our fellow Haitians while we're the same Haitian people. The U.S. administration has urged Americans to leave the country as soon as possible. Canada has closed its embassy, and some aid organizations have suspended their operations due to the dangerous situation. Thank you very much. The Prime Minister flew to Kenya last week to finalize a deal to set up a UN task force led by Kenya to help restore order. That triggered this latest crisis. But there are still no UN troops on the ground to help authorities restore order, and the Prime Minister has yet to return. Stephanie Decker, Al Jazeera. Internationally, on Tuesday, the EU will launch a multi-billion dollar plan they hope will better prepare Europe for war. The upgrade of Europe's defense industry comes as NATO holds its largest exercise since the Cold War. Al Jazeera's Step Vessin reports. NATO parading its military might at its eastern flank. Troops from France, Germany, Turkey, the UK, crossing the Vistula River in Poland, practicing to move reinforcements to the east. The enemy is imaginary, but it's no secret where NATO believes the threat is coming from. We are in a big, pretty big security crisis since the invasion of Ukraine. So NATO needs to understand what we need to do to defend the alliance. Some NATO leaders have warned Russia could attack one of its members within five to ten years. The Russians will continue with this war because Putin will not give in. That's one. Second, if they would win the war in Ukraine, it's not the end of instability and uh, crisis. It is the it's, it's the start of even more because we also know that his ambitions are larger than Ukraine. So the threat is real. That's why Donald Trump's recent words raising doubts about the U.S. commitment to NATO have shocked many in Europe. Since the end of the Cold War, the continent has drastically cut its defense spending, and countries like Germany and France are struggling to produce enough weapons and ammunition to send to Ukraine, let alone use for its own defense. Despite this show of force, many here realize Europe is not ready to defend itself without help from the United States. The largest German arms supplier recently predicted it will take a decade until Europe can produce enough arms and ammunition to become independent. Military leaders are urging Europeans to wake up and stop taking peace for granted. Are we going to produce electrical bikes or are we going to produce things for the military? People have to understand that these changes in the world have an impact on our lives. On Tuesday, the EU will present its defense plan to bring Europe's defense capabilities up to speed. Preparing the military for a possible attack is one thing, but convincing people who have not personally experienced war for more than a generation, another. Stepfasen, Al Jazeera, Korsenjevo, Poland. Finally, food shortages are worsening in Chad. The United Nations says 8 million people will go hungry this year. That's almost half of the population. The crisis follows a poor harvest, soaring fuel prices, and an influx of refugees from neighboring Sudan. Al Jazeera's Ahmad Ibris reports. Markets across Chad have lost their bustle. Traders struggle to sell their products as fewer buyers come to make a purchase. When they do, it's a fraction of what they used to buy. Bread, milk, meat, vegetables, everything is expensive. Prices have doubled in most cases. We are barely surviving. Traders say they're not to be blamed. When we transport goods, we pay almost double of what we used to. 
The transporters tell us it's because of the increase in cost of fuel. The effect of that is clearly felt by the people of Chad. Two weeks ago, the government of Chad announced a hike in the price of fuel. Hours later, it declared an emergency in areas of food and nutrition. The United Nations listed Chad as one of the world's most insecure countries in terms of food supply, mainly due to impact of climate change. The World Food Programme says the food in this warehouse is all it has for the 17% of Chad's population. That's 2.9 million people who depend on it for their supplies. The UN agency says it needs $240 million to provide food for the next six months. And right now, it's out of money. Eight agencies warn the current shortages and inflation are set to get worse. It's going to get tougher now during the lean season. So you have this lean season where basically people had all their cereal that they have in the house. Now they have exhausted everything and they need to wait for the next harvest in September. Climate change and insecurity have forced many farmers off the land. And food inflation in neighboring countries isn't helpful to Chad. Some countries also are now have imposed some ban on exports. So some countries where we were used to buy nearby Chad, we cannot. So we are really counting on the cereals that we can purchase locally in Chad. This has made competition for locally available food items more intense. It's the poor who have lost out, especially now that aid agencies have little or no money to help. Ahmed Idris, Al Jazeera, Jemena. This brings us to the end of the regional and global news coverage. Up next is the 3D weather forecast. And that's Safe TV2 headline news for this Tuesday evening. As we take our leave, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and YouTube. You can tune in tomorrow at 6.30 a.m. for rebroadcast and at 7 p.m. for more news. Until then, please take care of yourself and each other.